Mr. X here, we got two weird things going on. First, you probably notice it right away, I'm wearing a hat. I rarely wear hats, it's kind of like pants. But every once in a while, there is a time to wear one, and this is that time, because I got some stuff going on up here that we're not gonna get into. Second thing I got going on is I have an interesting piece. The reason why it's interesting is because I'm gonna speculate that the character is 40 years old-ish, and 10 years ago, they wouldn't even made this statue, and now a bunch of people want it. So let's jump in and kind of find out why and find out if this is, piece is any good. And we got a special surprise in today's review. So let's hit it. Mr. X here with XM Studios quarter scale Star-Lord comic version statue. What do I mean by comic version? I mean this piece is not based off of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is not based off of Chris Pratt, uh, that handsome fella right there. This is actually based off of what Star-Lord is like in the comics. However, nowadays most people know who Star-Lord is because of Guardians of the Galaxy, because of Avengers, because if he could just keep his fucking motions under control, then they would have beat Thanos and Endgame, the big snap wouldn't have happened. So it's really his fault. But uh, XM Studios made this piece and they only made 350 of them because they have this new system where essentially it's made to order, which I freaking love. So what that means is they uh, do a PO, a pre-order window for three weeks or something like that. And if you purchase him uh, in those three weeks, that is what the edition size is set at. They probably do a few more here and there and certain distributors order some. But I like it because it makes it more valuable. Now 350 for a licensed piece really is not a large quantity, especially with what some of the competitors are coming out now with ESs of 3,000 or 5,000 or things of that nature. So the value on this uh, really increases. You'll see that with uh, some of their previous statues like Moon Knight and Storm. And So just kind of a heads up, if there's an XM Studios piece and you think you want it, get it. It's just a smart move. Uh, with that being said, came in the standard XM Studios boxing with the, um, you know, pain in the ass cover to get off. It was one lower uh, layer of foam. Here's right here, the classic XM straps. And then here are all the different pieces in the foam for Mr. Quill. And then right here are all the pieces before I assembled him. So essentially that was his base. A uh, few parts of his spaceship, like the windshield and this armrest right here, and the door are a separate piece. And then, like most statues, uh, uh, Star-Lord is all one piece other than his arms and portraits, and we do have a couple switch-outs for you. Now, XM Studios does not make an exclusive version. They're all the same, but this one has, uh, first of all, the right arm has this gun where he's holding it back, kind of like he's uh, jumping out flying, which I'm not a fan of because of the pose it puts the statue in. And then the other one here is the one I've been displaying where he's kind of holding it up. And either one I think works fine, but uh, we'll talk more about that in concept and design. Second thing he has going on is he has two portraits. The first right here is an unmasked portrait, and we will do a review on this, and initially I didn't like it, but it's growing on me. However, I don't think that it holds a candle to the masked portrait that you see displayed here. 
Just like any XM Studios piece, it comes with a pussy book. And it comes with an art print, which I haven't looked at yet. So let's take a look at that guy. And this is pretty cool. XM continues to do this. It could be a cost savings measure if they ever cut it. But uh, I don't even know what it looks like. Oh, that's pretty badass, actually. I unfortunately do not collect art prints, so I just put these back in the box with the statue in case I ever need to resell. That is uh, my first XM piece. I don't remember what it was. I should go look at my son's room because I think the art print is hanging on the wall with a thumbtack. Let's do dimensions on him really quick. And then we'll talk a little bit more about Peter Quill. So with his gun up, he's 22 inches tall. Depth is a little hard to determine, but probably about 13 inches. And with his gun out, he's probably about 18 inches wide from point to point. For exact dimensions, go to XM Studios' website and then use your handy dandy uh, Google to figure out centimeters calculators, depending on what part of the world you're in. So Star-Lord is a uh, superhero, you guys know he's been on a few different teams, and even though he is the offspring of a celestial being and a human, he really doesn't have superpowers per se. Uh, that's a little bit arguable. The comic book version, he, um, he's a master strategist. Um, so he's very, very smart, so that's one big thing he has on, and they, they play that a little bit in MCU, but not really, really big. And then second thing is, he is very good at combat. So hand-to-hand -hand combat, no superhuman strength or anything like that. However, his costume and uh, gear allow him to have super strength, flying. Uh, he has elemental weapons or some other stuff that the comics represent. But I was never a big follower of Guardians of the Galaxy or Star-Lord. Um, but I did like him a lot in MCU. And I think Chris Pratt was the perfect role. Uh, you know, he's kind of that comedic relief. They had a lot of comedic relief in the uh, MCU, but really, really cool piece. So that's a little bit uh, about Star-Lord. So let's talk about where he kind of falls into this statue right here. And before we do that, um, I purchased him from Anton Wu. So XM Studios, there's tons of great ways to get it in the U.S. Um, there are three that I highly recommend. One is Anton Wu. I buy a bunch of pieces from him. The other, I've... Uh, spouted before is Spec Fiction uh, by Todd Johnson he, uh, that has a website. Very, very cool. You can find Anton Wu on Facebook. But the last place I highly recommend as well is Gem Mint Collectibles. So he's a distributor and I don't get shit for um, recommending these places. I just think they're really good. And I know Gem Mint actually got this today. So, um, you know, let's see if he's uh, reviewing it right now. Let's uh, give him a call and see if he used the pussy book to do it. So, uh, hey, Suri. Speed dial number three. Hello, Mr. X, can you hear me? Hey, Jim. Mr. X here. I heard you got Star-Lord today, and um, me and my viewers were just wondering uh, if you've had a chance to look at him and what you thought of him. Personally, it exceeded my expectations. You know, this is one of those pieces that the pictures looked okay, collector's pictures looked not so okay. <laughs> he looked like he had a really washed out face and looked really flat, but you know the thing about low expectations is that when it exceeds your expectations, it just feels that much better. And I think that's what this piece did, man. I really am happy that I ended up getting this Star-Lord piece. Cannot wait to pair it with XM Studios, Rocket, and Groot. Whatever you do, don't let Richard Ryder take a picture with this because he's going to tell everybody in the forums that this is his statue. So just watch out for that guy. All right, stay minty. All right, man, thanks. We uh, really appreciate it. So he uh, did a few spoilers, but that's no big deal. So go support his channel as well as his store if you haven't. And uh, let, now let's jump into the concept and design of this piece. And I think this is where it really, really shines. I think uh, it's just the idea of it was genius. And the execution is very well, too. You know, and before we jump into the concept and design, nowadays with, with XM Studios and Prime One in particular, there's kind of a bar when it comes to sculpt, uh, paint, quality, QC. And they continue to hit it. So... While it is still extremely impressive, it's not something we really focus on during these reviews, but I think the concept here is uh, beyond my expectations. So 
it's dynamic. First of all, it's a spaceship, and it's part of a spaceship, or maybe it's an escape pod or something like that, and it has clearly crash landed into some rocks, and it is blown out, and he is obviously in the middle of a battle because he is jumping out of the spaceship, jumping out of the windshield where it's broken, uh, guns drawn, uh, face on on this particular portrait. He's ready to fight. He's, he's perhaps going to take off because he does have flying ability. And it is just really, really cool. And one of the things, not just, you know, hey, the concept, but the design of it. They were able to showcase it where you can see the inside of the ship from tons of different angles. And we're going to see that in the close-ups of the paint and sculpt. But uh, no leaning issues. Everything went together really well. I was really impressed. Uh, it all looks like one piece, even though it's not. So I think uh, hands down props to XM uh, Studios and their team. One other cool feature they actually uh, added is if you take his helmet off, comes with batteries, which is nice, he actually lights up. And here's a picture of that. So very short on the concept and design today, but it's so flipping good. I uh, very impressed by it. I think they knocked it out of the park. The paint and sculpt for overall is really, really good. Uh, there's a few areas I think that could have been better, but I think this is a fantastic piece at 350 uh, ES and it's not leaving my collection anytime soon. Uh, the reason it's not leaving my collection is I'm actually doing a whole Guardians of the Galaxy setup. So this is only the second piece, but here's a picture of him. So here he is uh, next to Drax, my custom Drax I've reviewed. I'm also planning on putting Groot and Rocket in there and then got to figure out something for a Gamora. Sideshows, I need a standard for 150 bucks if I'm gonna buy it, in my opinion. And then above them, some cosmic entities here. You got Galactus and my favorite statue, Silver Surfer. But let's talk about the paint and sculpt on uh, Star-Lord. And one of the things when we see close-ups, you're gonna see dust. There's a lot of dust on it, which he's brand new, but it's factory dust, so I'm gonna have to clean him. But we'll go from there. Let's start at the base as we so usually do with the this is where rocks. I think there could have been improvement. So, the rocks look okay. Uh, they needed more texture, uh, more highlights to the paint to make it pop. Just kind of a miss on the rocks, but if you're staring at the rocks of this statue, you're missing the complete aspect of the statue. And then let's look at the ship because it's phenomenally done. It's not only phenomenally done because there's so many different pieces you're going to see here. Like here's the door that I said comes off. But other pieces, hoses and bars and electronics and lights and different silvers and golds and all the battle damage to it. You can see uh, scratches and dents and faded paint and black streaks. You see the nuts, the bolts. Different parts of the exterior here. Take a look at the uh, windshield, the parts that are cracked on that. And it's not actual glass, but you wouldn't expect to see that on a spaceship. And I love the jagged edges. And then here's the back of his chair. So very cool. Again, they added a lot of detail in the paint, which it's the back of the statue, so you rarely see that. And then the chair he was sitting on, kind of the this leather doesn't look like cushioned by any means, doesn't look like a comfortable chair, but this leather uh, grain wood type uh, material, you can see his seatbelt straps that are sculpted on there. Great, great job. Here's the control panel, tons of different colors of buttons and screens and switches. This looks a little cartoonish to me, but this is based off the comic book version, so I think that's okay. So the base itself, like I said, just tells an awesome story. Uh, he's, he is a pilot. There's uh, you know certain parts of the comics where he can actually control his ship uh, via telepathy or whatever that is. So very, very cool. And Star-Lord is equally so as impressive. So starting his boots here, so the bottom part of the boot, really great sculpt. There's some laces up front, some bends in it, a few, few different colors of shade. There are so different colors on this statue from the base to Star-Lord himself. And then he has kind of this, I don't even know what they are, but uh, padded sheaths over his boots. You can see them strapped onto the bottom of his sole, and then there's straps around them, and there's all these folds. And again, just part of his costume. This is probably what makes him fly, actually, for those people more knowledgeable than me. 
Then he has these pants with these uh, stitched in knee pads, this blue color, solid blue color, a few different folds uh, on the front and the back, but along the sides quite a bit more with this red uh, stripe and it almost looks leathery, great sculpt on it. And there's a few different colors of red in there. And on the inside of his pants, both on the front and back, here's the front, has this texturized suit material with a lot more folds in it, totally different color blue, much, much darker, looks really good adds to the statue and the same with the Zass. And then you can see the bottom of his coat. His coat has that same texture uh, on the sides of it. And he's got a belt right around his coat and it, it looks fantastic. Great job of sculpt on the pouches, this brown leathery color, this clasp on the front. And again, more pouches on the other side. Looks really, really good. The belt in general. And then here's the back of his jacket. Again, just great job sculpting. It looks like it's really in movement, really, really in motion, moving. And same thing on the front, and he has his uh, symbol, painted this uh, off shade of gold. And not really a lot of anatomy, which I do like, actually. Uh, the, co the coat is uh, very much padded. Then checking out his arms here, a lot of the same. Uh, which is a good thing, the folds and the blue uh, costume and the red stripe down the side. But then when you get to his gloves, his gloves look awesome. So it has this blackish uh, hinge to it all throughout. So it's, and it's almost a different color red. Great sculpt on the fingers, some buttons on there. And then his guns look awesome. Here's the gun on his left hand. Almost looks like it has a silencer, some cool detail. They spared no expense on that. Different color silver. And the other one is a black and red gun with some of those orange uh, uh, power colors in there as well. And then along his neck, he has this uh, material, a uh, different texture than anywhere else. Kind of like a zip up uh, heavy coat almost. It's hard to describe, but you can see it right here. And then let's look at his unmasked portrait, and I'm just going to look at the skin because the rest of it's the same as the mask portrait. The colors on the skin are awesome. I think they did an, a great, great job. Some reds and some pink tones in there. Same with his lips. He's got some uh, five, a five o'clock shadow. It looks like it's painted. It's not sculpted, but it looks sculpted. His eyes, fantastic job on his eyes. A little bit of cross-eyed, which I'm not too sure on, but he is at an awkward pose. You can see the wrinkles on the side of it. Great sculpt on his nose. He almost has a little bit of a Paul Rudd and Ant-Man look, which obviously is not intentional. And then taking a look at the uh, breathing apparatus below, this allows him to fly in space. Tons of work on this. Intricate detail, colors, hoses. And then the side. He has kind of the mechanics that open and close his uh, face mask. Then the hat has the, his symbol on the top with uh, kind of some this faded blackish blue above that. A lot of fade in his uh, helmet on both statues because it sees a lot of battle and wear. And then check out his mask. Again, this is the comic version of it. Almost looks like a bug of some type, but it looks great. It really looks good. I think they did a great job, just the design of it, the paint. It's a lot cleaner, but it makes sense because it's not always exposed. So very, very happy with this piece. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know, uh, you know, this is, to my knowledge, the only mass-produced Star-Lord statue out there. And what's really cool is they made one that's going to be really hard to beat. So tell me a statue out there that there's not any competition, but even if there was, it would probably be shut down. That'd be a good topic. So, But I want to say uh, thank you to Jim for uh, taking my call. He usually sends me to voicemail. And thank you to you guys for watching. I uh, really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, give me a like. If you didn't, give me a dislike, and uh, we'll see you next time. I'm traveling next few weeks, and next week I have five customs coming in, but thankfully I'll be home for six hours. 
total. So I come home, six hours, get on a plane, go again. So I think I'm gonna try and get all those reviewed and uploaded for you guys. So uh, have a great weekend. Uh, make sure nothing weird happens since it is Friday the 13th. Take care.